Welcome to this video. My name is Stefanie Juchmes and I am Juno developer at MonkeyBread Software. Today I want to show you how you can integrate maps based on Apple Maps into your Sojo applications. Arriving right is always important, so it is good you can incorporate navigation into your applications. You can use the map integration not only on your desktop app on Mac, but also use it in your iOS apps. To use the classes and the functions, we need the MBS Mac Framework plugin from the MBS Sojo plugin collection. You can watch the linked videos to learn how to install the plugin and what else you can do with the 70,000 plus functions from the MBS Sojo plugins. Now let's begin our journey with Apple Maps. Before I show you how you can incorporate the individual functions of the map view into your application, I will first show you in an example what you can do with the functionalities. Afterwards, we will program this app together. We have our map view in which we can move, can change the position on the map and zoom. The streets are well visible in the current map view. But whether our destination is in a forest or not, we cannot see that at the moment. There are several different map view mods available. All of them having their own advantages. Muted standard is similar to standard. But only the most important things are shown and the markings are keep simple. Satellite mode has the advantage that the terrain is visible. However, no locations or street names are visible. This makes orientation a bit more difficult. The satellite flyover is similar to the satellite mode, except that the map is displayed as a sphere. This shifts the proportion of the larger section based on the curvature of the Earth. Hybrid shows the terrain and the roads. The roads are then overlaid on the terrain profile. So the best of both worlds, terrain and orientation are combined. As you can imagine, the hybrid flyover is like the hybrid mode, except that the proportions are based on the globe. The map type is not the only thing that you can change about the map display. You can turn on and off some handy map displays, so you can see your current position on the map. Especially if you always walk around the city and use the application on your phone, it can be handy to have stores and points of interest displayed. So you can activate the points of interest or deactivate it. In the standard map mode, you can also show the outlines of the buildings. You can see it here. If you plan your route manually, it can be useful to have an overview of the traffic. With the hook next to traffic, we can show the traffic volume. Rush hour traffic and road closures are shown directly with colors on the map. So that a better manual route planning is possible. We can also show and hide various controls for working with the map. We can show the zoom controls at the bottom right of the screen to make zooming easier. Or the compass with which we can align and rotate the map. We can also show the scale in the upper left corner to get a better feel of the distances on the map. 
Of course, it is also nice if we can take a picture of the map section. You can take a map shot and save it to a specific location. Here we have it on the desktop. But we don't only want to look at maps, we also want to work with them. So we can search for a certain address, for example, London. Or we want to calculate and draw a route from our location. You can choose whether the route is calculated for a car or a walking person. You can also make marks on your map using overlays such as polygons and circular overlays or mark location with pins. I will now show you how you can integrate these many functionalities into your solution. After you have installed the plugin, we can start. To display a map, we need the control MapKit View Control MBS in our GUI. And we can drag and drop it in our window. Just adding it to our GUI ensures that we can already view map sections. We can also zoom with the mouse or the trackpad. To be able to add more functionalities, we first create a property of type MK Map View MBS. Now we create the open event of the map view and pass the view of the map view control to the property we just created. If we now want to address a view, we do it via the property. We now want to be able to switch between the map types. To do this, we add a desktop segmented button control to our window. We label it with the terms standard, muted standard, satellite, satellite flyover, hybrid and hybrid flyover. To change the view, we set the property map type of the map. The value to pass is of type integer, but can also be specified via a predefined constant, which of course make our code a bit more readable. In the pressed event of the segment button, we start with a case and describe the individual cases that are triggered when a certain button is pressed. We have many different properties available with which we can customize the display of our maps. For example, next to our map we can create a series of checkboxes that can turn on and off the individual options. So we extend the window, 
have a bit more space for the checkboxes. For each setting, the code looks similar. For example, we write the code of the value change event that we use to show or hide the traffic. If the value is true, that means that the checkbox is checked. Then we set the show traffic property to true. Else, if the checkbox is unchecked, we set it to false. This is exactly how we can set the other properties for the display too. Now we come to the snapshot function for which we place a button in the window. And this should place our map section as an image on the desktop. So we open the pressed event. We need an object of the class MK map snapshot options MBS in which we can pass different properties to decide how the map should look like. First of all, we specify which map type should be used. When displaying the map, we specify the type of the map that is currently being displayed. We also specify the region, the map section, and these are the points of interest and the buildings should be displayed. To make it easier, we rename our MapKit view control to Map. Because this name is a little bit shorter. As you can see, to create an image from a map section, we don't necessarily need a map view control. You can also pass the information directly. After we have set the options, we can create an object of the class MK Map Snapshotter MBS and pass the options in the constructor.
We then use the start method to start the asynchronous snapshot process. We have to wait until the image has finished loading. After the completion of the process, we have an object of the class MK Map Snapshotter MBS in the snapshot property of snap and can now query the image there. We can then write this image on our desktop. For displaying an address on the map, we have the method showAddress, to which we can pass the address as a parameter. In our example, we want to specify the address in a text field. The search is start via the button we place below it. And we need a button. We use the method in the pressed event of the button. The function show address will automatically zoom to the searched address. We can show our own location with the blue dot. But if we want to calculate a route, we need the exact location as an address. For this, we can use the functionalities of the core location section of the MBS Sojo plugins. With these functionalities, we can determine our current location. Because we want to work with events, we have to create a class of the type CL Location Manager MBS. We call it My Location Manager. In our window, we position a button and a text field in which our address will appear. Because we also have the search address field, we can reuse it. We also create a property in the window with the name Location Manager of the type My Location Manager. In the code behind the button in the pressed event, we first check whether we can query a location with this device and whether we have the authorization to access the location at all.
Then we can link our property in the window with the newly created class. Before we start the query of the location, we set the occurrence with which our location should be determined. We have different settings to choose from. We choose the best occurrence. And then we start updating the current position. If we have now determined a new location, the did update event of our My Location Manager class triggers. We can then stop the request for the current position, because we already have the wanted information. We don't have the location as an address yet, but latitude and longitude, which we can read. To convert this coordinate into an address, we need the geocoder. If we determine the address to the coordinates, we work again with events of a class. For this reason, we must store the geocoder in our program in such a way that we can also access it outside. For this reason, we store the geocoder as a property in the main window. and store an object of the CL Geocoder MBS class in this property. To know when the address determination is completed, we need the class MyCLGeoCompletionHandler MBS in our project, which gets the superclass CLGeoCoderCompletionHandler MBS. The completed event fires when the address determination is complete. We now create such an instance in the code. Then we create an instance of the CL location MBS class and pass longitude and latitude of our current position. Now we call the method reverse geocoder location, which should give us the address to the coordinates. We pass in this method the location and our completion handler.
The completed event fires when the address is determined. The result is an array of place marks. We only need one of these addresses and for this reason we only want to use the place mark with the index 0. We then compose the address from the information we get from the placemark object. We enter this address in the field that we have provided for this purpose and display the address on the map. We have three buttons in the whole project that query the user location as an address and process it differently. Once the button that writes the address in the start field for the root calculation, you can see it here, and a button that writes the address in the belonging destination field, you can see it here and the button that we have just created together. Each of these buttons should get their own mode, which we store in the property in the main window. We set the property during the process to 1, 2 or 3 to know in the events how we have to process. So we built in in the two used events suitable if and else if conditions. In the event that update for the mods 1 to 3, always the same, will be done. The location of the user will be determined. We must of course also set the mode in the pressed event of the buttons. We also want to implement the functionality that we can calculate a route. The individual route steps should be listed and the individual routes should be drawn on the map. So that we can calculate a route, the start and destination points must be awaitable as coordinates. Which means we must now go 
the other way around and convert an address into coordinates. For this we also need the geocoder. If we want to plan a route, the property mode should contain a 4. The start and the destination address are in the corresponding text fields. Before we can calculate the route, we need the coordinates to the start and destination address. These must be calculated one after the other. So we first get the coordinates of the start and then of the destination and then we calculate the route. We must put again an instance of the class CLGeocoder MBS in the already known property Geocoder. And then we define a completion handler. Of course, we also specified the mode here. This time we call the method geocoder address string instead of reverse geocoder location, which returns the coordinates for an address. Again, the event completed of the specified completion handler fires. Now we add the distinction that the mode is equals 4. We get from the first place mark the information we need. We get location latitude and location longitude. Now we store this as coordinate as a new object of the CL location coordinate 2D MBS class. We have to differentiate our procedure, because the event does not know whether we have just converted the start address or the destination address into coordinates. For this reason, we create a property complete of type boolean in the main window, which is only set to true when the destination address is passed in the completion handler. So if complete is false, then the determinated coordinates are from the start and stored in the start property in the main window that we create in a moment. Then we start a method in the main window which we will write in a moment and which will then convert the destination coordinate. And then we call the method.
we write the method in a moment, but we have to do some other work here because when we arrived here in the script with the destination coordinate, the destination coordinate should be stored in the main window property destination instead and another method will be called. So we type the else part This method we also write in a moment. We now first write the method that converts our destination address into coordinates. We call this method prepare for root. First, we set the property complete to true so that we know in the completion handler event complete where we have to go. Then the address conversion to the coordinates is done the same way as we just saw with the start coordinates. In the completed event, the coordinates would then be written to the destination property and the next method, calculate root, would be called. We still need to write this one as well. Before we forget, we set complete back to false for the next run. We have our coordinates of type CL location coordinate 2D MBS. But to work with them, we need them as MK map item MBS objects. For this reason, we need to convert them. But there is no constructor to the class MK map item MBS that accepts CL location coordinate. 2D MBS objects. For this reason, we convert them to MK placemark MBS objects. Maybe you think, wait, placemarks? We just had that as a value in completion handler and then we convert it to CL location coordinate 2D MBS. Why now again? Here we have to pay attention. We had placemarks that related to the core location classes. Now we have placemarks that related to MapKit. So we are dealing with two absolutely different classes. Now we come to the conversion to map items. Now we can finally start planning our route. First, we have to make some settings for the root. We create an object of the class MK Directions Request MBS.
We fill this with information. We define our transport type again with a button bar. If the button with the index 0 or nothing is selected, the transportation type should be the car. If the button with the index 1 is selected, it is a food path. The index of the button bar is set into a property. We name this property transport. And it is from type integer. Then we set start and destination. If we want to have more than one route displayed, we set requests alternate routes to true. Again, we need the help of events for the root calculation. So we create the class mkDirections of type mkDirections MBS. The event calculate directions completed fires when the path calculation is done. We want to store our paths in the directions property in our window. Then we say where the list of routes should be displayed afterwards. Finally, we call the method that calculates a route. When the routes have been calculated, the calculate directions completed event fires. In this event, we get as input values the response containing the routes, the error that may have occurred during the query, and the tag. We first check if there was an error while calculating the routes. Then it's time to tidy up the map. Get all the overlays as an array and remove them from the map.
we do the same with the annotations. To display the entries of the routes later, we have to empty the list. Thus everything is prepared and freed from legacy. Next we check whether there are calculated routes. If there are any, then we want to create an array with the routes and process each route individually in a loop. For the sake of clarity, we would like to draw only the first root on the map. If it is the first root, so E equals 0. Then we want to draw the root on the map. For this we create a new object of the class MK multi polyline renderer MBS and pass it the polyline of the root. This polyline, that means a root with multiple points, then becomes an overlay. We can then add this overlay to our map. Because we want to start navigating at the starting point, we zoom in in this address. Now we set the start and end point on the map with a pin. We create an object of the class MK point annotation MBS for this purpose. We pass the coordinate. Then we set the title and the subtitle. We display a small pop-up with title and subtitle next to the pins. The title in this case is start and the subtitle is the address. Then we add the annotation on the map. We do the same for the destination pin.
Now we have to make sure that the individual root steps are also entered in the list for this. First of all, we have to allow the list to expand single rows. So we can display the root name and the travel time above. As sub-items, we can then pass the root. Then we start the loop again. This completes our programming for root planning and we can use it So we have Minic and Berlin. And here we have our root with the start with the pop up. And here we have the end pin, the destination pin with the pop-up destination and the address Berlin. Here we see our routes. We have three routes with different names. We see it here. And here we see the travel time in minutes. And we can expand this rows and see the single root steps. Last but not least, we want to set a radius around our current location. We would like to be able to specify this freely in a text field. So we have put another button and a text field in our window. Here we also have to determine our location first. We can copy the code for this from the Me button and only have to change the mode to 5. So we copy it. Go to the radius button and change it to mode 5. We now have to go back to the did update event of our My Location Manager. Here we build in the case for mode 5. We call in this case a method that we pass the latitude and longitude. The name of the method that we write in a moment is perimeter. And here we have latitude and Longitude. We still need to write this method now. First of all, we define the coordinate around which the circle should be drawn. We call this coordinate center coordinate. Then we save in the variable also the radius that we have in the field. Here we have to take care that the method that we want to use needs a value in meters. 
So if we want the user to enter the radius in kilometers, we have to multiply the number again with 1000. Now we create a new overlay with the method circle with center coordinate and our data. We then add this overlay to our map view with the method add overlay. So here we see a radius of 200 kilometers around my location. Now we have added all the features we saw in the beginning in our app. There are many more things you can do with MapView. Just have a look in our documentation what could be interesting for your program. Have fun with the app and get creative with the MapView functionalities. If you have any questions about MapView, feel free to contact us. I hope you enjoy the presentation. Maybe we will meet in person at a conference. Thank you for watching.